Hi everyone, this is Chuck from Press Check Training and Consulting. Uh, today we're out here with the BE Myers crew and uh, I've got a Dagger uh, V2. Pretty excited to see the production version of this model come out and I'm going to be talking about V2 variant, V1 variant and uh, some of the stuff that I've seen uh, going all the way back to alpha and beta testing. There are three things that kind of stick out to me that really highlight Dagger and its evolution from Maul and the other uh, multifunctioning amen lasers of like that that uh, genre, if you will. Uh, the first one is the Illuminator's divergence wheel here, or you know I call it the whiz wheel. Uh, it was designed so that you know when you when you've got your hand on the weapon, you can get it on the thumb and just by a simple rocking motion back and forth, you get an extreme increase and decrease in the divergence of your illuminator. Anybody that has done any type of uh, night vision training or shooting in night matches or whatever, there's a constant battle with lighting conditions to have illuminator size, illuminator brightness, and laser pointer intensity that are all optimized, that they allow you to see what you wanna shoot without washing it out and give you a precise aiming point. So uh, if you were to ask end users what they want, they would want an infinite amount of possibilities for uh, what the laser and the illuminator look like when they're looking in their night vision goggles. The problem is that you start getting into menus and buttons and, and dials and switches that now make the man-machine interface uh, in real time under stress more problematic. And so it's a, it's a fine balancing act with the developers to give you the variations that you need to see everything that you need to see and make decisions and make shots in the dark, but also uh, be able to do that intuitively and not have to spend five or 10 seconds uh, changing the settings on your laser by holding buttons to access submenus and, and things of that nature. So one of the most important things that I wanna change when I go from uh, condition A to condition B uh, or situation A to situation B is the uh, wideness of the divergence of my illuminator. Uh, for example, I could be scanning on the uh, from the ground up into the second and third story of a structure prior to making breach, and my illuminator might be three feet wide because I'm punching energy into a window to see if there's anybody standing back away from that window in the shadows overwatching us while we're trying to go in and uh, make breach. And then as soon as that breach is uh, conducted and I go inside, now I'm dealing with room clearing, CQB, whatever you want to call it. And the amount of IR energy I want is going to be at a different brightness and it's probably going to be much wider in order to see much more information. So uh, in the past with, uh, you know, the PEC series, you were having to uh, deal with dials up here. With NGAL, you're having to deal with dials back here. With MAL, you're having to slide a slider back and forth that could also change the brightness of your pointer. And with the Dagger series, all you're doing is running the whiz wheel forward or backward and your illuminator is getting smaller or wider. It couldn't be any simpler. The next thing that, you know, really kind of uh, impressed me about this design specifically on this V2 is the fact that there is a two button design and the Viz Override is on board now. I haven't always thought that Viz Override was gonna be uh, you know, a, a necessary thing to have, but if the laser's capable of it, I wanna be able to use it without uh, switches. In the event that I get a weapon and I don't have the right switching for it or uh, due to the size of the rail, uh, where the switching system that gives me uh, Viz Override would be, uh, is not set up optim optimally for me to hold the gun. I can reach up on board and I can hit the, that button and I can get that Viz laser even if the uh, dagger is set in IR mode. So that I can use that for suspect control, signaling, queuing dogs, a variety of, uh, of events. And so uh, all dagger have Viz override, but much like the current SOCOM small arms aiming laser, you have to have that tape switch in order to get that functionality. Uh, the V2 gives you that button on board so that no switches are necessary. The last thing, since we're talking about switches, that makes uh, me really excited about this system is the port that is used for the switching is capable of passing data. And therefore we have this basically open ARP architecture that can be forward compatible to other things. You know, Dagger was designed from 0.6 watts, which is uh, class one iSafe pointer, all the way up, you know, to 300. 
350, excuse me. Uh, so it gives you this full capability uh, to put this laser on essentially anything from sub guns all the way up to heavy crew served weapons that are on aircraft. And that uh, port being a data port means that if you have a laser on a system like an attack helicopter where nobody's going to be able to access these buttons, everything can be done through data. Remote weapon stations on armored vehicles, crew served weapons and the remote cabling for those. The ability to uh, manipulate all of the functionality of these buttons through a remote data cable uh, is just actually uh, pretty incredible. And I'm, I'm looking forward to see how uh, strategic partnerships with other companies turn out where we get some really, really good out of the box thinking about how to do this. I could absolutely see this thing on some type of remotely piloted aircraft or uh, rotocopter drone with a data port where you could turn on and laze uh, from a, uh, a designator, uh, a designator platform like that. And that's, you know, obviously nobody thought when they were making rail grabber M files that that would be where we are, but the data capability of that port, it gives us that, uh, it gives us that right out of the gate. And the fact that it's in a, a package that is no bigger, no heavier than the current, uh, small box lasers that are uh, out there in this generation is really legit. Uh, Alibi, um, is the ball uh the battery port uh the fact that it takes a cr123 that it's side loadable that it's uh mountable without the use of tools the fact that i can bump uh other enabler switches right up against the laser and not have to move them this is my uh unity for my white light gun light and battery comes right out of the side battery goes right in the side uh if the battery starts to go down while i'm out on an uh mission cycle or whatever just throw another battery in the side and, and i'm right back into the show we're out here for the night shoot i got a dagger v2 here on my mark one uh, m car i'm going to show and demonstrate the various intensity settings as well as divergence levels that are at your fingertips when you're using dagger based on the ambient lighting conditions i'm going to decide whether i want to be an ir1 or ir2 high and low band once i set it for that i get three intensity levels of brightness for both the pointer and illuminator and then the full whiz wheel in terms of divergence levels available so i can kind of uh, mix and match as i need to based on uh, how i'm getting laser return and splash downrange So laser's bright, laser does what it's supposed to, laser keeps zero, and it's just in a form factor that is outstanding uh, and a ruggedized waterproof housing. And I am going to hammer the crap out of this production version and, uh, and let you guys know how it goes.